This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. Let's talk about Survivor Series. We're finally here. The show gets 35% thumbs up, 32% thumbs down, 32% thumbs in the middle. People are really split. Uh, there's a dark match or I guess a pre-show match. It's our truth, uh, pinning Zach Ryder. Uh, then we can start the actual show. We've got Daniel Bryan retaining his United States championship, beating Ted DiBiase in nine fifty five. Meltzer liked it, gave it three and a half stars. Brian wins clean with the LaBelle lock and, uh, Meltzer would call it a very good start of the show. How'd you, uh, how'd you like the match? And what did you think of, uh, the heat that Matt Stryker was receiving? Uh, I guess uh, a lot of folks in this era started to really pick on his commentary. Well, he had his own style and he liked what he liked and he tried to be voice, you know, voicing himself, uh, as almost as the counter to Michael Cole, who is the heel announcer and was dumping on all the baby faces. I think Matt thought he might take up the, the fight for the baby faces and maybe it came across that way. Maybe he was reaching too hard. You know, I never paid enough attention you know, to the commentary because I was doing so many other things and I was always between one place and another. I wish that I had time to sit down and watch a show and listen to the commentary. Uh, but I didn't really, um, I know that, uh, when I look back and I watched, you know, several matches on this show, the guys, you know, they were, they were some young, good looking baby faces and heels, Ted DiBiase. I wish to this day that him and Randy and Cody could have been left together for just say two years and let that run its course because coming out of the shoot, those three looked as good as anybody we've ever put together. They looked like three stars and they all learned from each other and they all benefited from each other. And when you split one of them off, you split the two off from Randy it, it took on a different flavor and it wasn't quite there yet. So it didn't stick. Then when you split, te- you know, Cody and Teddy up, they weren't ready to be split up either. They could have still learned from each other and been a great team. I thought, you know, the, sum of the parts to me, uh, when you broke it up was not as valuable as the three of them together. And I just wish they could have ran their course and, uh, Watching this match with Daniel Bryan, who you just knew, or I knew, if they would just continue to let him do what he does, they don't have to push him, shove him, put a bunch of laurels around him. Just let that kid go wrestle. And that's what he was able to do with Teddy, and they tore the joint down. That match was incredible. I can't help but wonder what Ted would be doing if he were in wrestling now. Do you think when it came down to it, his heart just wasn't in it? You know, had he just gotten burned out on the travel and the WWE grind? I mean, WWE, everybody knows this, perhaps nobody better than you. It can wear you down. And, and and I just feel like, you know, he, he maybe would have enjoyed today's climate. Maybe when you've been to the, to the pinnacle and you've been with Randy and Cody and, and that group. And you were working with the top baby faces and you were enjoying the business at a top level. And the writers were having to write decent stuff for you because you were the top heels. Once you experience that, you can't go back to just coming to TV every week and they may or may not use you. One thing's for sure. They have no big plans for you and they're not going to be writing a bunch of creative stuff for you. And I saw Teddy just get farther and farther down that list and take it for granted. And people would look at him like, okay, well, it's over. You know, you can, you can look at this match and just no buys, just put it on face value. You can even cut the, the sound off and just watch the quality of the work. And him and Daniel Bryan went out there and tore it up. Who knows how good Teddy could have been if they would have just stayed the course so many things have gotten broken up so many angles and guys that were partners and got split off and things got you know before they got too hot they would get cooled off and and the main reason for that is company don't want guys having too much power they don't want to get too hot 
because if they get too hot, then they may have an opinion. And if they have an opinion, they may say, well, I don't think this is right. And once you go there and once you start asking all those questions, a lot of people in a room don't like to have that aggravation, if you know what I mean. Let's, uh, let's talk about the next match. I guess first we should mention there's a segment with Miz and Alex Riley. They come out. Miz is cutting a promo comparing the Miami heat with Nexus saying they're both overrated, despised by most people in the league and hopelessly mediocre. He compares LeBron James to Wade Barrett. He pushed that he's from Cleveland where James played and said he was a traitor for leaving the city and said, LeBron would never be a champion with the heat. Uh, and he says he's tired of carrying the briefcase around and he's ready to cash it in. Uh, then we get John Morrison pinning Seamus. Hey, Kim, before, before we go any further, yeah. uh, one thing we might've skipped over is you had the clean win with Daniel Bryan yeah. who had to really, really work for the LaBelle lock and right. on his exit. Miz came out with Riley and blasted him with that briefcase. So he got a little, you know, got a little extra heat there. Daniel Bryan has had a great match, a great win, got blasted by the briefcase. Then they went into their promo, which, you know, th- this was the incarnation of when they were starting to build Miz. So just to catch everybody up, this was the infancy stage where he was going to get his big shove. And it's a cool look back at what's now become a more legendary feud in WWE, Daniel Bryan and Miz. I mean, it feels like those guys have been attached at the hip. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30-year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money. It's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.